Good morning everyone. Today's topic is placenta pibia. It is one of the cause in antipatal hemorrhage, APH. Okay. So what is placenta pibia? So the names indicating that the positioning, normal positioning of the placenta. So while the, the placenta that is present in front of the internal os or the cervix. So that is named as placenta pibia. Okay. So the definition tells that the placenta, when the placenta is impl implanted, partially or completely okay over the lower uterine segment this is called the placenta previa so this is our uterus okay so if you cut the uterus imagine if you draw an imaginary line then the upper part is called upper segment and the lower one is called the lower segment okay so if the placenta normally the placenta is formed on the upper segment suppose this due to some abnormalities the placenta is implanted partially or completely you see in this picture it's completely going to the lower segment and here it is partially okay so if the placenta implanted partially or completely on the lower segment this is called placenta previa so it is in conditions okay it's an abnormal condition where the placenta uh, due to some uh, uh, due to during the time of formation of the placenta there may be problems that's why uh, placenta is implanted on the lower uterine segment so before we are going to discuss about the placenta viva, we should give a look on the what is placenta. So placenta is a temporary organ that is developed during the time of pregnancy. Okay. So placenta is uh, formed when the uh, fertilization takes place. The the, the cell uh, the the, uh, the fertilized the ovum in the form of fertilized and after that multiple cell division takes place and the the embryo takes the the embryo uh, that is implanted on the what the endometrium layer of the uterus okay so there is where from where the implantation takes place that is the 10th day of the fertilization when the implantation takes place their formation of the what placenta takes place so the um, the implantation side there there are two components that form placenta so the maternal component and the fetal component the maternal component is called decidua bacillus and the fetal part is called the chorion chorion frondosum okay the chorion frondosum here uh, number of vessels that forms uh, villi like structure primary villi secondary villi tertiary villi that's way they invent the bed of the endometrium okay where the it invent means encroach to the uh, bed of the endometrium that is called decidua basalis okay and again the decidua that uh, also hold the embryo capsule like holding like structure this is called decidua capsularis okay and the other part that is present on the uh, on the margin of the uh, uh, uterus that is decidua peritalis okay so the decidua is with decidua basalis peritalis and decidua capsularis so the, in this uh, decidua basalis and the chorion frondosum there in that area uh, implantation takes place and more vascularity is capillary growth and from that region placenta growth is takes place so placenta growth is started at the six weeks and it's completed by the 12 weeks of gestation so this is all about the formation of the placenta so according to the normal positions as we find that uh, the normally it is present here but the abnormal is that it's uh, complete to, it's uh, it's uh, partially or the completely integral or so due to their positioning the placenta is divided into four types okay so type one that is it is lie in the low line placenta previa its name is low line so if we draw an imaginary line then it's just low line okay so it is encourage the uterine lower uterine segment so if you see in the internal examinations what you find this is the internal os so if you go for inter inspection or the internal examinations uh, uh, vaginal examination we find the it is up to the what the placenta up to the internal os okay the second is type 2 this name is marginal placenta previa so the name is indicating that the placenta is present on the margin of the lower uterine segment okay and if you go the uh, examinations if, if see then you find the internal is it is moving towards the internal os okay 
and the distance is very it is very far it is but it is going towards the internal earth and the type 3 the name is partial or incomplete okay so it's here in here the placenta that covers the internal earth but when fully dilated of the cervix we find that the, it is not completely covered the internal earth so it is called partially or incomplete placenta previa and on the examinations uh, on the vaginal inspection we find it's covering to the no, we don't find the internal os okay so it's covered to the internal os when uh, when the cervix is dilated then we find then we come to know that it is not covering the internal os then the fourth one is type 4 that is the uh, it is completely up to the internal os means it is completely covered to the internal os on the examinations uh, by the vaginal inspections we find the uh, we don't find the internal it is totally covered the internal os this is all about types of placenta previa so then we come to know about what is cause what are the cause uh, why this uh, abnormal positioning of the placenta takes place the one is dropping down theory so dropping down theory suggests that when the implantation takes place, that is the 10th week of gestation, this 10th week of fertilization, if the embryo that is uh, that it uh, dropped down to the lower regions, so if the embryo that is dropped down in the lower regions segment and there he formed the implantations, then the placenta is formed on the lower regions segment. So it is this, this is one of the theories that is the dropping down theory. The second one is persistence of chorionic activity, means villi. So the chorionic frondosum, that is the fetal part, they form number of villi uh, that uh, attach that attach to the deciduous vessels. If the number of villi that is formed other than uh, not uh, the, uh, other part of the um, uh, other part of the endometrium, then the position of the placenta is changes. So that is one of the cause that is the persistence of chorionic activity. And the third one is defective deciduous vessels. So what happens in deciduous vessels, uh, that maternal part, now it's discussing about the maternal part. So if the scapularis and the deciduous peri peri parietalis, so if they are encroach, mix up, then the placenta, the placenta, uh, the, the, the placenta is moved to, to the lower return segment. So if the placenta may be um, chances to grow on the lower return segment. If the, the capsularis and the, the parietalis it's encroach, mix, mix up, then the placenta may be formed in the lower return segment. So it is one of the uh, cause of uh, placenta previa. So uh, knowing the cause, who are more prone, we come to know about risk factor. So risk factor tells that who are more prone to uh, chances of placenta previa. So one is multiparity. So multiparity means the number of pregnancies, uh, number of deliveries takes place already and uh, the mother is going to next uh, subsequent pregnancy. That time also but uh, placenta previa takes place. And the uh, one thing that is maternal age is the factor. So elderly primary gravida, that case or the mother uh, was going to, uh, going to be pregnant uh, after the age of 35, uh, 30, 35 years. So there is a chance of placenta previa. And the third one is previous history of seizures. If there is a uh, previous history of seizure and sections and the mother is going to second time pregnancy. So that case also placenta previous chances of placenta previous takes place. And the, and the, the and another habit that is the, uh, the habit of smoking using cocaine. The mother who are more uh, taking cocaine is just smoking in his working so it's also injurious and also it's a uh, during the development of the placenta it's a uh, uh, defective uh, abnormal textless so more chance of placenta we will find the uh, mother who was smoking so this is the risk factor and then we go to know about clinical features so uh, clinical features said that it is a painless vaginal bleeding. So in this uh, uh, placenta previa, bleeding is uh, is the one of the uh, one of the sign. Uh, so uh, here the bleeding takes place, but the bleeding is painless. But means the patient the not complaining about the pain during the time of vaginal bleeding. Okay, and if the bleeding that is suddenly takes place and onset that is called sudden onset. 
the uterus feel relaxed and if you go for the poor abdominal examination we find the uterus is not tender means uh, it's uh, not a uh, hard uh, it is just soft is normally uh, happens in the pregnancy so there is non tenderness of the uterus okay and vulval infection one thing you have to be keep in mind that uh, in the placenta pvr no for vaginal examination is expressed only the vulval infection will do so from this vulval infections we see the type of amount of bleeding and the color of the bleeding <clears throat> and i have forget to one thing to discuss that is the uh, on the type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 this two type 1 and type 2 okay so this is uh, this uh, there is um, this is considered as a minor degree means uh, it's not affect to the maternal condition during the time of delivery but the type 3 and type 4 and along with type 2 posteriors so in the type 2 posterior plantation of the placenta so this three are considered as a major major degree of um, problematic situation that arises during the time of delivery okay so on a as we painless is the clinical features we find a painless vaginal bleeding second one the bleeding is we suddenly in onset and the third one the uterus feel relax uh, no tenderness and the head is floating so the head is not engaged the head head <coughs> on poor examination we find the head is floating <coughs> then no vaginal elevation it's one thing you to be we should keep in mind the no vaginal elevation should be take uh, we go for any we, we should not do any vaginal examination in placenta previa because if there is if uh, it's maybe uh, poor examination it's maybe tears it's got injured the placenta and also bleeding so severe bleeding may be take place so if necessary to go for uh, if uh, there is uh, necessary uh, for vaginal examination so the, it should be done on the ot whether all the emergency situations all the equipment should be kept ready okay and the, after knowing this clinical features then we go for the investigations so investigation uh, we do the part uh, trans abdominal sonography from this trans abdominal sono ultrasonography we find we uh, can uh, conclude or uh, find the position of the uterus uh, find the position of the placenta and for the confirmatory test we go for mri that is magnetic regions regions image so from this uh, from this two investigation we can we can find the position of the placenta uh, previa so where this it is type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 okay so by this investigation we come to confirm about the uh, position of the placenta the this is all about placenta pvia and the types of placenta cause clinical features and uh, investigation next on uh, the next in next video we will discuss about the management how you manage a patient with placenta pvia okay so hope you like this video and uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, please subscribe my channel